What's going on, my beautiful people? It's everyone's favorite Bostonian, Mark Wahlberg. Nope. <laughs> Supercliff, back again with another brand new video. Star Wars Bounty Hunters issue number three is written by the talented Ethan Sachs and drawn by... I'm totally going to butcher his name. So there it is. And with that said, let's get our hyperdrives fixed and make the calculated jump to light speed, where our story begins on the graveyard planet of Gomera. Bounty hunter Oris, who's been tracking Valance since the bounty for Nakano Lash became active, hears an explosion. Oris goes in to investigate, but rather than finding Valance, he comes across Valance's droid, 94L. It's here where Oris decides to have himself a friendly chat with the droid. On the planet Rujan, we check in with a mysterious individual who's living that incognito life. Okay, I'm just gonna say it, this is totally Nakano Lash. Mm-hmm, I outed you, girl. Just like how Blake Lively outed Ryan Reynolds in that terrible Green Lantern movie. Damn, that was a rough time, but I digress. Lash's informant tells her that things are not looking so good, because ever since the Rebels' defeat on Hoth, the galaxy's gone to shit. Cloud City is under Imperial control, whereas on the planet Shorgad, reports say that a crew of mortar whales have killed a group of unbroken clan members. But all of that doesn't matter, because our hood-wearing individual only cares on whether or not Valance has received her message, as she wonders on what's holding him up. And that's probably due to the violent atrocities that are being committed by the Trandoshan bounty hunter, Bosk, whom currently is super saying against Valance. For Bosk is aware that Valance possesses the coordinates for the Lash's location and is totally willing to disembowel Valance for that very reason. However, as the two bounty hunters continue to kill one another, we're given a flashback from years ago aboard Nakano Lash's ship, the Star Skimmer. On the exact day of Nakano Lash's betrayal, To Anger is checking in with his twin sister, To Anger, before their final job. Valance in the background wants To Anger to hurry it up so that he can get a chance to communicate with his lover, Yor Vega. But Bosk, being the asshole that he is, decides to antagonize Valance, while also telling him that just because Valance has new synthetic skin, it doesn't mean that Vega, Valance's lover, will accept him. This causes Valance to back off from calling Vega. However, it also causes both Valance and Bosk to start clawing at each other's throats. That's until Nakano Lash herself steps in, calming down the situation as she readies the group for their mission. Back in the present, Bosk and Valance are still trying to kill one another, but eventually, Valance gains the upper hand. It punches Bosk in the head, causing him to render unconscious. And though Balance, in his heart, wants nothing more than to end his opponent's life, he instead shows mercy, which will serve Bosk as a reminder that it was Valance who beat the shit out of him. As Valance makes his way back to the ship, he sees a headless 94L laying about, courtesy of Oris, who is now in possession of the droid's head, for Oris is trying to bypass 94L's memory bank so that he can obtain the Kana Lash's location. Checking in within the Kessel Sector, on a smuggler's refueling station, a group of mourners whale members are packing up some spice for delivery, until suddenly they are all brutally massacred by General Vakura and her unbroken clan soldiers. One of the soldiers informs the General that they have just received a message from Lash regarding the terms of her surrender. The General tells her man to stall her and to track the signal and to also ask about the other one. Um, what other one? Well, elsewhere we pick up with Nakana Lash who appears worried. As she enters her home, she tells whomever else is inside that their location is no longer safe and that it's time to move. Unfortunately, bounty hunter Oris is already there waiting for the infamous Nakana Lash. Whilst threatening Nakana Lash's niece at gunpoint, back on Gomera, on Valance's ship, Valance is pissed about the current missing status of 94L. Unfortunately, things are about to get a whole lot worse, as Valance is soon greeted at gunpoint by Toanga, whom demands from Valance to name one good reason as to why she shouldn't kill him effective immediately. Star Wars Bounty Hunters issue number 3 was once again another great addition to this series. I enjoy seeing a much more in-depth look between Valance and Bosk's relationship, whilst in between their deathmatch on Gomera, highlighting that not only is Bosk a ferocious killer, but he's also a bully. Plus, seeing Valance defeat Bosk was really cool. Deciding to spare the Trandoshan rather than killing him, simply as a means of torture, branding Bosk so that now until the end of his days, Bosk will know that it was Valance who would beat the shit out of him. Really great stuff, and I wonder if sparing Bosk will, perhaps going forward, cause problems. 
The pacing in this book is also fantastic. Ethan Sachs is doing a fine job in moving the story along smoothly. By placing the flashbacks carefully within the story, the overall momentum never comes across as messy or convoluted. Plus, we're able to benefit from it by spending more time with these characters while simultaneously getting a chance to understand each and every one of their backgrounds. Star Wars Bounty Hunters is a series that everyone, Star Wars slash comic book fans, should check out. Heck, even if you're not a fan of comics, go check it out anyways. It's a fun time. Star Wars Bounty Hunters issue number three gets an 8.5 out of 10.